Community Nonprofit Network Podcast, aka the CNN Podcast, where your nonprofit shines. I thank you for taking time out to spend with us. You could have been anywhere else in the world doing whatever else you wanted to do, and you decided to be right here with us. That is absolutely awesome, and I appreciate you. My name is Erica Scott. I am your host and I am the executive director of Life Changers, Inc. The CNN podcast is brought to you by Life Changers, Inc., a nonprofit in the Atlanta area serving justice-involved individuals by teaching them employment skills needed to keep them out of the penal system. Amen. The sponsor of this episode is By the Book Coaching a Christian coaching platform to help you align your life with the Bible and rise above average. Amen, amen, and amen again. So in this episode, let's get into elevating your nonprofit organization to better serve your community. This, folks, is just the foundation of why we do what we do, right? And when you think of community, not just Mr. Rogers' neighborhood, but um, the reason why you do what you do is serving some sort of community, whether it is, and I I know I always go to an animal (laughs) example, but yes, whether you have a no-kill animal shelter, uh, whether you have a tutoring nonprofit, you're still serving a community. So now, just so we're all on the same page, if you go to Google like I did and uh, Google the word community, you will get the definition of a group of people living in the same place or having a particular characteristic in common. And they gave the example of the scientific community. Well, um, and again, that's dictionary.com. Well, I um, will be blunt in saying that uh, we as nonprofits, <laughs> you know, we're not serving so much the scientific community. Not that there are not nonprofits who do, because there are nonprofits who want to get uh, children from a maybe a low income community household or whatever um, and get them more involved in the sciences because we need sciences. Let, let's not, you know, please don't misunderstand me. I truly appreciate the sciences, not my strong suit. And you guys should be quite happy that I, <laughs> I veered away from sciences. But um, yes, you, 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 you have nonprofits who serve larger communities, and we're going to talk about a couple of those, um, one of which is unfortunately growing, uh, and, and it's not just due to COVID. One is due to COVID. A lot are due to COVID. A, a lot are due to COVID uh, that has sparked so many nonprofit. My nonprofit started in um in the during the pandemic life changers was just born we just made a year uh not even a a month ago last in uh, last month about two weeks ago we made a year and you know this this is um it's times like this when i will say and and please don't take this to be anything political because it's not i guarantee you it is not however it's times like this, economic distress, when characteristics of certain types of people, groups of people, businesses, are front and center. So now, with that being said, uh, I, I'll say the housing crisis, in my opinion, 
my humble opinion, I don't know everything about it, I'm not here to argue, the housing crisis, I truly believe, should not have even existed. It should not, to this day, exist. We should not have a, a, a housing crisis. We should not have a housing crisis. So that leads me into the first of the two communities that I'm going to discuss. And that is the homeless community. Mm. The homeless community was already, it was already a, a, a big deal to begin with, right? Even before, you know, 2019 and before. I'm from New York City. I grew up in uh, the village and Chelsea sections of Manhattan, downtown. And um, there were homeless people that camped out on the corners everywhere I turned, everywhere, every block. Some in the daytime and many at night. Now, yes, I did grow up not far from Chelsea Piers, but it, it, you know, everybody, and, that, and that's not to say everybody at Chelsea Piers was on drugs. I didn't take a survey, excuse me. Uh, but I do know that there were, there were drug addicts, there were alcoholics. The pandemic just exasperated that, the, 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 the homeless situation. I'm not in New York anymore. I left New York in 91. However, I, I st my family's still there. So I, I still know what's going on. But even here in, in the Atlanta area, even here in the Atlanta area, homelessness is ridiculously high. It was already high. To, honestly, I know we have enough to house everybody. But when you're dealing with a capitalistic society and people got to make a buck. No, you got to give me mine. Give me me. Give me my coins. No, where's my money? What do I get out of it? Hmm. You know, so unfortunately there's just not, you know, even Jesus said the poor will always be with you. I just don't, I, I personally just, don't, I'm not Jesus. <laughs> I'm not Jesus. So I just don't see, I, I, I see that poor is one thing, homeless is another. I really don't see why there are people living in the little rooms under the subway in New York, why L Los Angeles is having an, an, a ridiculous, a, an exorbitant amount of homeless people. Arizona was one of, if not the highest rate of homelessness in the country. I, I thought it was just me. I, you know, I, in, if, in case you don't know, I am a retired long haul truck driver. So I have been to and through just about every state in what you call the lower 48, meaning not including Alaska and Hawaii. Um, and here in the lower 48, I have not been to Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine. So everything else between Massachusetts and San Diego and Miami and Seattle, everything in between, been there. So now, I just thought it was me that in Arizona, homelessness, it, 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 I was like, well, maybe they just hang out at the truck stops. Or maybe they just hang out around, you know, the warehouses where I'm delivering, you know. Uh, maybe they just hang around where, you know, we 18-wheelers are going to be. No. I heard it on a report then <laughs> that uh, uh, I think just last year that um, Arizona has one of the highest, if not the highest rate of homelessness. Los Angeles right behind. You know, it's not because they're near each other, but you know, that to me is just like, what is going on kind of thing. And then you have investors, you have companies, institutional investors, individual investors holding houses empty, apartments empty because they don't want to put somebody in there and then have to go through the hassle of having it to evict them because they can't pay. 
Maybe it's just me. Something's wrong with that picture. Something is wrong with that picture. I said in the beginning, and I'll be honest, I'm, you know, I'm math, science is not my thing. Math is not my thing. <laughs> but when it comes to dollars and cents, I try to keep some kind of gra economics, you know, the econ economics is not my thing either. But when this pandemic first hit three years ago in 2020, I made a comment on Facebook. Why doesn't the government mandate every company, landlord, blah, 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 just pause payments, just pause payments for a minute. And my dear cousin graduated, you know, Spelman graduate, and she's a, you know, a, um, financial expert. And, uh, and she said, no, that would collapse our economy. I left it alone because I couldn't understand it. And I didn't want to, you know, <laughs> I didn't want to go back and forth. Well, why? It did it. But all that to say this, I think sometimes it's just a simple solution. And I really believe just like New York did, and I believe Jersey did, and I think quite a few states did pause landlords from being able to uh, evict anybody, but also pausing mortgages from having to be paid. So I'm not, I, I don't know all the ins and outs of all that you know, that agreement, that arrangement or whatever. But my point is this, I know here in the Atlanta area, you couldn't get a, uh, the suburban lodge long, long-term extended stay types of places book solid and gouging on their rates. I heard upwards of $4,000. I didn't research this. I'm just going by a conversation I had uh, with somebody who was looking to move into one upwards of four thousand dollars for a room not a deluxe room not all, all the rooms look the same look the same if you've ever been if you've been in one suburban lodge you've been in just about all of them and upwards of four thousand dollars for one month and you wonder why there's two and three families staying in one room this is ludicrous it's ludicrous to me i'm gonna get off of the soapbox i'm sorry i die i die i, I digress i am passionate about homelessness i'm passionate you know what let me I'll, I'll say this and i'll let it go i am passionate about anything that can be prevented i'm passionate about anything that can be prevented homelessness can be prevented you know drug addiction can be prevented there are it, illiteracy can be prevented I'm just, I'm passionate about things that can be prevented, especially when it comes down to, well, no, we let that happen because money has to be made. Oh, I'm done. I'm done. Let me keep going. Let me keep going. Okay. So now in, in researching this, I was um, glad to see that the United States Interagency Council on Homelessness, initials U.S. ICH, that they are the only agency at the federal level with the sole responsibility of ending homelessness. So if your nonprofit is working to tackle the homeless situation, serve the homeless community, or you're even just in the idea phase of starting a nonprofit or some type of community organization to serve the homeless, feeding them under the bridges, giving out blankets and hot cocoa, you know, during the winter months, whatever it is that you're doing that is focused on the homeless community, you might want to, you know, plug into them and see what the resources support. I didn't go to their page or anything like that. I'll link it here in the uh, show notes, go to the, in the description. Um, but yeah, that sounds like a really good place to start to see how you can be more effective, right? And again, the, the whole topic of what we're talking about today is elevating your nonprofit, okay? Serving at a higher capacity, helping at a much higher level. So if you have resources, I, I, honestly, I, I, don't, I didn't know about this 
uh, agency until I was researching to do this episode. So that was refreshing to know, okay, um, I, you know, my soapbox rant still stands, but <laughs> because I don't feel that there should have been a need, but it, I will keep going. We'll keep going. I will keep going. I'm so yes, I urge you to reach out to them and see how you may be able to help with that. Okay. Um, so now the next, huh, this one here, me personally, being a female and having a girl, my daughter is, and having two nieces is extremely difficult for me to even fathom what's going on with the sex trafficking and why this has gotten the legs under it like it has. Uh, again, going um, back to my days shifting gears in a big rig. Uh, we used to go to a little diner, <laughs> a little diner um, in Roland, Oklahoma um, called Four Star Diner. And I can't remember her name, but our waitress, cute, cute you, young lady, um, blonde, real petite, you know, southern drawling. Hey, how y'all doing? You know, just real cute. And, um, she worked the night shift. One day her ride dropped her off at, to work. And now mind you, this is like, honestly, if, a, if an 18 wheeler can fit in someplace and it's not like one of your big TAs or Petro or Loves or Flying J, it's not very well lit. I, I don't know how else to say it. And so where, you know, her ride dropped her off. It's late night, probably, uh, I think about 10 o'clock at night. Not much foot traffic, no foot traffic, not much uh, traffic at all. And there was somebody watching from like across the parking lot, watching her. And they had been there before, she said. She wasn't paying attention. It was the cook who worked with her on that shift who told her she needed to be careful and have whoever's dropping her off walk her in. I did not realize that that area of Oklahoma or that Oklahoma at all was an issue with, with sex trafficking. What? And I said, well, I guess it kind of makes sense because you are right there by Arkansas and you know, you can, there's, so, I mean, you're in the middle of the country. There's so many ways you can go. Uh, meaning where, where, and when I say you're right there by the Oklahoma and Arkansas state line. So if an Oklahoma police officer tried to chase you, you dip into Arkansas and, you know, they can only go but so far and you have all kind of interstates, you know, this is on I-40. You have all kind of interstates and different backwoods, literally backwoods and you're in, the mountains are right there. So it's just, you wouldn't, you just don't know these things until you're like in these areas and you hear stories like this. I now I knew about Detroit. I know I've heard that on, you know, I'm, I'm big on uh, crime TV shows, forensic files, those kind of shows. And you hear about, of course, California, New York, Florida, you know, where runaway teens tend to go. But a, here's a, a mom of three coming into work and being scoped out by some guy and I don't think it was to get her phone number. The creepy part was the cook said, yeah, remember he was just in here last week. What? Wow. In any case, whether it was for sex trafficking or stalking, I don't care what he was stalking at that point. As far as I'm concerned, he was stalking. It's one thing to go in there and eat every day, but you come in here to eat one day to make sure that she's serving you because she's the only waitress on at night. And then you stay at a distance 
the next few nights? No, <laughs> no. I said, you want to call the cops? Because I'll sit here with you while you do. When he wasn't there anymore, but it was just a matter of, you know, this needs to be reported is all I'm saying. So now when I was, um, because I'm, I'm retired from trucking now, but when I was trucking, I love, 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 shout out to Women in Trucking. Uh, that's a big organization of women in trucking, you know, transportation, not just truck drivers, but brokers and uh, truckers too, but just anything to do with transportation. And they were really big. I mean, they had a huge campaign of preventing and, and solving this sex trafficking dilemma. It's a crisis. And it, it's not, and it's not even necessarily because it's coming in from other countries. We have a crisis right here in the States, right here in the States family. And the scary part is it could be any one of our families. It could be any one of our kids. Have you ever seen the show Missing? I don't watch those kind of shows anymore because I do get a, a bit riled up. I said, no, 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 let me, let, let me leave it alone. But yeah, it, it is really, again, something else that um, I really believe could be avoided. Now, it's hard to tie that in with, well, you know, it's for money because it is illegal. And of course, you'll be frowned upon if you even support uh, sex trafficking. Well, yeah, we need to, you know, the girls need to, you know, because so we, we can afford that. No, 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 nobody's, no, no. Uh, but it, so you you will never hear, I don't, I would hope you wouldn't hear the same argument of sex trafficking versus homelessness. You know, why I both, I feel they're both moral crimes. Um, sex trafficking is also a criminal, but um you know, both of these are just, it makes absolutely no sense. No sense. Now, I don't know about an agency who's dealing with this. I would think that would be, um, you know, like the FBI, the um, maybe Department of Justice. I'm not sure. I, I'm, I'm not a federal agency guru. <laughs> I can't tell you what each one does. Um, Department of Human Resources um, or uh, Health and Human Resources, you know, services or something like that. Department of Human Services, I believe, would be one that you could. I mean, if you see something that even looks like this, I would just say call 911. I don't care who picks up, you know, just get it reported. Don't play hero if, unless you feel froggy. But I am bewildered at how this has grown to be such a huge issue. And this has nothing to do with the pandemic, folks. We can't blame the pandemic for everything that's going on in the United States. We, th this is not, it's not that, oh, the pandemic came, so things kind of fell by the wayside. No, I retired from trucking in the beginning of the pandemic. I retired in November, 2019. So technically we didn't even know about the pandemic yet. Right. Although I was posting on Facebook, this is looking kind of serious when it was all the way out there on the West coast, moving right along this here, the incident I'm talking about with the restaurant that happened in, um, I want to say early 2019 or maybe late 2018. And, uh, we've heard of other situations and I won't get into those simply to protect privacy, you know, the people's, uh, the people, the family's privacy. But yeah, one was, uh, uh, I know a young lady who was almost, um, abducted in Detroit and, um, a college student on the way to class and I'll leave it at that. So in broad daylight and then I'll leave it at that. And the reason why I say in broad daylight is because if people are so bold as to do this in the daytime, you can only imagine how it is in other little nooks and crannies like Roland, Oklahoma at night. So, you know, prayers up for this, this country, this world. We got a lot of things unraveling 
and um, the pandemic, all it did was just exasperate what was already an issue here. And um, unfortunately, all that to say, come back full circle to why so many nonprofit organizations were created during the pandemic, because there are so many issues that aren't being tackled. Now, does that mean every nonprofit that was started had to be started because nobody was tackling that specific part of that issue? No, there are many people out here feeding homeless. There are many organizations out here giving the homeless blankets and hot cocoa and taking care of uh, women with children, you know, who were evicted. Um, I had a call from a young lady the other day with uh, two small kids and she was about to be put out. And, you know, it's heartbreaking because as much and as hard as the nonprofits are doing, and I mean great work, great work. They are finding vouchers for hotels from anywhere and everywhere they can find them. But guess what? Can't find a hotel room. Can't find a hotel room. Now, I think it's getting better, but a year, uh, less than a year ago, last summer, I, I know somebody close, close, someone close to me, a sister in Christ, and um, she homeless, living out of her car, because she could get vouchers, and either she couldn't get a voucher, and or couldn't get a room. This is ludicrous to me. But if you pay for a room, oh, you find a room because at the same time, I knew somebody else, the one I was telling you, said the rooms are upwards of 4,000. Well, the vouchers didn't cover that. The voucher, it wasn't like a blanket, oh, well, you know, for, for a room, any price. No, it was like, I think up to maybe $100, maybe $80, $90 a night. No, those folks, they want the people coming in Oh yeah, uh, you want it for a month, four grand? Yep, up front. One month up front. And it's sickening. It's sick. that's, that's the best word I can use, family. Sickening, it is sickening. But again, you know, that's, that's one of the downfalls, you know, human sacrifice, you know, children, families. It's heartbreaking. It is truly, truly heartbreaking. So... Uh, but again, if you are looking to help tackle the homeless situation, wonderful. Yay, kudos to you. I'm going to eventually learn how to um, how to implement some sound effects <laughs> because I'm always clapping, ooh, yay, uh, into this. So, but yes, the homeless, contact the federal uh, agency I mentioned. And for sex trafficking, again, I believe that would be Department of Human services, DHS. Uh, but like I said, if you know of anything like that, that's going on right under your nose, don't even try to figure out what agency, just call 911, let them figure it out. Just let somebody get there like ASAP. So, you know, that's, um, I used to run into young ladies in the truck stops all the time. When I say young ladies, I mean like preteens and teens, but it, it, it it's, mm. Mm -hmm. yeah, it, it's, Wow. Okay. I'm going to leave that alone. You know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying. There's no need for it to be going on. And it is, um, especially not at the rate and the pace that that is growing. So if you see it, say it. Yeah. Yeah. If you see it, say it, please family, please. Okay. So one thing I am going to do for a while, as long as I can find them, um, because you guys responded so favorably toward episodes that had events in them. And so although the title of this doesn't list events, this is just kind of like an added, okay, here you go. Uh, here's more information for you. It does, however, feed into what's the main topic elevating your nonprofit organization to better serve your community. Well, Erica, what does an event have to do with me serving? Because these events are here to broaden your scope 
uh, thinking? You're, how, how are you serving? Are you just serving from what you know? Well, how about we get you around some other people who may have been doing this, or who probably have been doing this a lot longer than you have, okay? And maybe doing it differently in a way that maybe you didn't think of. So one thing about nonprofits, one thing about community work, I although Life Changers, the nonprofit I founded in 2022 is, is brand new, I personally have been in community organization and, and helping to uplift communities since I was a teenager, okay? And, um, and we can even go back to my preteen days when my grandmother, evangelist Maddie Curl, may she rest in peace, um, used to take me with her to the youth detention center where she taught Bible study. Um, I was the same age as the girls in the, in, in the group that she taught, um, in the um, pod or whatever they called that. And um, I wound up tutoring them in math, in English, and, uh, and just like peer-to-peer -peer counseling outside of tutoring. Uh, Chaplain Brody, who, uh, you, who used to head up the um, Willow Lane Detention Center, he would let, he, he, of course, he had to let me, <laughs> he had to get permission for me to be there, but he would allow me to go with the girls in the gym because I was an athlete and teach them how to play volleyball. This is how you spike. This is, you know, every, I mean, this is how you stand. And this, this is what volley means. And I mean, it was and basketball. I played volleyball and basketball. And, um, you know, this is how you stand during a free throw. And I mean, this was like absolutely amazing for me. It was the thrill of my summer. I mean, that was the thrill of my summer. And for the girls, you know, at first, to be honest, at first, yeah, some girls didn't like me. They, they, they didn't like the fact that I could come and go. I mean, it is all you can boil that down to. But by the end of the summer, oh man, they were like the biggest, they, they gave the biggest and tightest hugs where I said, okay, well, I got to go, you know, school starts next week and, you know, tears, I'm, oh, I'm not, <laughs> I'll, I'll get emotional, so I'll leave it alone, but the, the, it, it, it's, I believe community work is something that we all, I'll say this, that we, that most of us have inside of us. And uh, one thing I'll say is this about community and community work. I got really big into it because I saw my mother and my grandparents really get into it. Like I said, my grandmother, she was an evangelist. And she did not so much out in the community, but she was prison ministry. She was really big on pr prison ministry, YDCs, um, out in the federal prison, out at uh, Fort Walton Beach. Uh, I can't think of the what, what it's called, but where they sent all the SNL scandal folks from back in the 80s. Yeah, I'm dating myself, but um, I, well, I remember the SNL scandal, so yeah, I'm dating myself. Uh, them, um, she's uh, between writing letters back and forth to celebrity inmates and or going to visit them, counseling them on the phone or whatever, whatever. I saw things like this, like, Shh, okay, hold on. I got to talk to this, you know, on the phone. Um, my grandfather, same thing, uh, retired. He was, a re he was a school teacher with New York City Public Schools. And uh, one year he had me come with him to IS-70. I was young. I was, I was like 11 or 12 because IS-70 was going to be my next level of school that fall. Uh, my IS-70, Intermediate School 70, that's junior high here in the South, they call it middle school. And But I worked with him in the kitchen. <laughs> the, the lunch ladies, they love George Scott. They love Scotty. And uh, so, you know, and I, and I worked. I worked. I put on my gloves and my little net hat and, and I scooped. And of course, the kids are looking at me from the other side like, <laughs> she, she doesn't look like, you know, Miss Annie over there. Um, but you know, it's, it's all about, uh, it's all about giving back. I just think that we as parents, grandparents, aunts, you know, uncles, dads, Hey, fellas, we really need to get out there and help because we're training the next generation and the next generation to do the same thing because like Jesus said, you will always have the poor among you, right? 
And, but you know, like the Bible says, um, we are not just due for us, but for our children's children, right? Well, I, I feel that goes in everything and giving back, working in the community, working for the community toward a common good is, is, is something that we leave for our children's children because we teach them how to be better citizens, think not just of yourself and um, how to be problem solvers, work in a team to solve a common goal, um, you know, to reach a common goal, to solve a problem that we have out here. Um, my grandson, um, shout out to Elijah Scott, and I were riding in the car one day and there's a lot of construction. Uh, man, there's a lot of construction going on around here. I mean, they're, I'm in like the nook and cranny of Cobb County and they found us. <laughs> So we got all kind of, we have all kind of construction going on. And that, and that started years ago. Uh, he'll be 13 this, this year. And that was uh, when he was like five. And, um, and the reason why I even say that is because we're, he, we're seeing, you know, big bulldozers and trees going down and blah, 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 big open areas where, you know, a building's going to be there next week. Right. And he says, Oh, geez, Mima. Why are they tearing all these trees down? Where are the birds gonna live? I said, well, unfortunately, you know, they're not worried about where the birds are gonna live. Well, why are they tearing everything down? Don't we already have enough buildings? Oh, my heart melted. I'm like, oh, my baby, he's thinking of other people already. Yes, that's what it takes. That is what it takes. And that boils down to community. Folks, I'm not getting off topic. I'm, I'm just, it's not just about what you're doing or what you're thinking about or what you're exposed to because these issues are going to go on past our days. But we need to leave a, 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 an army of problem solvers, but they have to see us solving the problem. When I used to... Um, when I used to volunteer at a homeless shelter, um, I had taken my kids with me um, and, and I was advised not to for the same reason that I said about when I was at YDC with my grandmother. But, and I guess because of that, I thought this was okay, but it was explained to me not to. So I didn't anymore. But when, when I worked in the communities, organizing back to school events, oh, my kids were right there with me. Um, and pre-cell phones, when um, I'd have to be at the house and at the kitchen table with a pen and paper and a pad and the, and, and the house phone, making notes of who to call, who I did call, the notes that they made and uh, or the, what did they just say? Uh, when did they say to call them and all this? And my kids are sitting there. They may be eating dinner. I'm not, I haven't eaten yet because I'm doing this. They see all this. So my son graduated with a degree in theater history. Um, he's an, he's an, an actor. Uh, he does a few things in the entertainment space and my daughter, she's a licensed esthetician, but they both give back. My daughter volunteers once a month with the ASPCA and my son, uh, he volunteers with schools and community centers who are putting together, um, like projects, uh, art, you know, theater projects putting on shows and so forth. And he'll go and volunteer with them, helping the kids study their lines and work, okay, stand like this and helping them get their facial experience, you know, but that's all giving back. You give back how you, my, my kids love animals. So my, it, it makes perfectly good sense that my daughter volunteers with dogs. She, she, in the can, well, mostly dogs. And, um, you know, he went to school for this. And so it makes sense that he does that. You don't have to go do something that you have to drag yourself to. But there's so many areas of community giving back that can be addressed, that need to be addressed, that I'm quite sure and confident that you will find a place that will warm your heart to be, just be a blessing to those who you reach out to and who you touch and who you help and who you help to uplift and who you help to put a smile on their face. So yes, folks, this is all based around community. So now let's get back into <laughs> the immediate topic about community that we were discussing. 
and that is the events. I found a couple of, um, I found two more events that I think are really helpful if you are really wanting to know how to take your nonprofit to the next level. So first up, we have the Association of Fundraising Professionals. This is AFP ICON, which is the largest conference uh, in, I believe, in the world uh, that deals with fundraising. And so AFP ICON is in New Orleans. Yes, it's in New Orleans this year. And it will be held April 16th to the 18th. Okay, links are available in the show notes, in the description with this episode. So visit our website, thecnnpodcast.com to get more information and to see if that's something that you um, are interested in attending. Um, So after two years of meeting virtually, um, AFP Icon is back in person. So this is, I believe, only an in-person situation. So that is um, definitely, if you're into in-person and you don't mind traveling, uh, then that's something you want to jump on because April is right around the corner, folks. It is, whoo, 2023 is flying by. Yes, it is. And let me pause there. I would really, really like to hear from you. These events that we've been sharing, for one, I would like to know what events have you attended, not just from what I've shared here, but in the past. You may not, you may be a vet in the nonprofit space. You may have attended dozens of conferences and workshops and events regarding your nonprofit. Even if you don't have a nonprofit or just like, and you just like to volunteer, um, but you like to go to different nonprofit events. What events would you recommend? I'd like to hear your recommendation of events that are coming up and why do you think they're a good fit? Who do you think they're a good fit for? That I, I, I think is really great to hear from those who are listening to us so that um, because That means there are going to be more people like you, like us, who want the valuable information that you have and um, are able to share. So please come to the website, thecnnpodcast.com, and in the comments section, please share your experience um, with uh, nonprofit events and how they may have helped or, hey, you know what? We keep it completely honest around here. Even if you wouldn't suggest and I'm not saying bashing, um, but even if it's maybe a conference that had been doing well, but you know this last one, mm, not so much. Um, that's especially if you're talking about folks traveling and paying. You know, some of these conferences cost a uh, house note, okay, and more. So, um, but yeah, definitely leave your comment and let us know what you think about conferences and events that you've attended and those even if you're not attending that we would be able to benefit from thank you i appreciate you in advance and so folks i would uh love to talk to you about your nonprofit, or even uh, if you're not the founder or executive director of the nonprofit, but you are like one of the main team leaders in the organization I would love to speak with you on the podcast. Um, Again, this is where your nonprofit shines. So the goal here is to create a global network of community organizations, global, not just here in the States, but around the world, because homelessness is not just here. Homelessness is around the world. So I would love to talk to you about what your nonprofit or community organization is doing to lessen the issue, the damage that's being done in your community to your people, you know, to the people that you serve and how 
the organization you work with is doing just that, putting a smile on their face, bringing families back together, returning lost animals to their right, rightful owners, helping people not be evicted, you know, helping people um, keep their cars or keep their health insurance or keep their jobs, helping people clothe their families after a disaster. There's so many awesome causes out here. I want to talk to y'all. I want to speak with every last one of you um, because you know what? There are people who have not been working in the community, who have not been tied into a nonprofit until their adult years, maybe 30, 40, you know, 50s. Now they're just now getting out here, so they may not even be aware of, of all the good that you're doing. And that is why uh, this podcast was even created because people like that exist, nothing against them. You don't know what you don't know until you need to know it. A lot of nonprofits are started because people don't realize that there are organizations out there already tackling that problem. Thankfully now, you know, you, you, you come down, uh, you, when you humble yourself, you don't mind linking up with another organization who's tackling the same problem because there's power in numbers, right? And um, the resources that you can share and the, the support, the volunteers, the, the, it's just awesome. It's absolutely awesome. And again, that is another reason why the CNN podcast was created was to develop a resource platform where you can link in and connect. So now with that being said, I'll go ahead and let the cat out of the bag. No word on when it is going to happen, family, so please bear with me. However, we will soon have a way, because this is a network, right? We're, we're supposed to be networking, right? We will soon have a way for you to join our network, of course, free of charge, uh, to join our network to be able to do just that, swap resources, swap um, ideas, come together. Um, somebody, like I gave an analogy last year, somebody in South America um, may have a foundation or a nonprofit community organization who is willing to support financially or however an organization here who is helping victims of uh, the sex trafficking trade from, you know, and the victims came from Colombia. Oh yeah, those are our people. You know, we'll help take care of them, you know, until their uh, paperwork is squared away to where they can return home. That That is what it, this is all about. And as long as we stay in our own little silos, then we're always going to be like whack-a-mole. One pops up, you, you bat that one down, one, but when we're all batting, oh, when we're all batting at the same time, those moles don't have a chance. They do not have a chance. Amen and amen again. Yes, family, I'm, that's exactly what I'm saying. Coming together is the whole point. I truly believe that we can build a global network. I, I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it if I didn't believe it. I wouldn't do it if I would if I did not believe it. It would I wouldn't even be here. Honestly, that that was the whole purpose of being here. That was the whole the community nonprofit network where your nonprofit shines. We want to bring your nonprofit, your community organization to the forefront to let other people know. Oh, they're doing that too. Hot dog, get them on the phone. What, give me an email. Let me reach out to them. Let, let us swap ideas. Let us come together to battle this in this area. That's all I'm saying. That, that's, that's the whole, that's the goal. That's the goal. That is the goal. So yes, look for it. Um, of course, I will, uh, I will keep you posted as it progresses. And now that I've said it, <laughs> Now that I've said it, I have to make it happen, right? Um, but no, that's awesome. And 
If you would like to be added to the email list for when this actually is available, then again, come visit the website, thecnnpodcast.com, and right there you will see sign up for the email list. So join the email list and, uh, and you'll be updated as soon as that's available. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. And then lastly, folks, um, have you thought about starting a podcast? That is a, a really talking about getting your information out there about your nonprofit, drawing in more resources, so forth and so on. Podcasting, if you haven't figured it out, is now like a big, it, podcasting has been around forever, forever. Okay, nothing new. However, it has gotten, it has gotten so much bigger just in the last few years. And that might have something to do with COVID. However, I truly believe, although this podcast, yes, is put on by my nonprofit, Life Changers, it is definitely, I, I don't speak about Life Changers so much as Lit Academy, which is, Lit is Life Changers in Training. And that is basically where our programs for the justice involved men and women we serve, that is everything is lit. So lit transitional housing, lit life skills, lit construction skills training program, lit lit digital marketing skills training program. Um, because no matter what you're doing, we truly believe that you should be a life changer in training at all times. Um, if you're a believer, then you'll you'll re relate to me saying you, we need to remain disciples, right? And what's a disciple? Someone who learns to teach. You learn to teach. You learn, so you stay in learning mode so that you can continue teaching. Amen? Life Changes is not a faith-based organization. Just letting you know that. But its founder, moi, Erica Scott, I'm very much faith-based. Amen? Okay, so last but not least, before we wrap it up, family, the second, the second event that I want to talk to you about, okay, well, you know me. <laughs> uh, so, yes, I am um, techie, and I'm proud of it, okay? So, the, the second one is nonprofit technology conference ntc ntc and so this one here is april 12th through 14th yes they're in there I'm, I'm listing these out of order that's okay um and it is in denver colorado um but also available virtually okay so no excuses you can uh visit the uh visit our website the link to this conference will be in the show notes. But just to tell you a little bit about it, this is the longest running nonprofit tech conference in the US. So you definitely uh, might wanna check that out. So now, who attends this kind of conference? Who attends this conference? Well, nonprofit communications teams, techies, and some fundraisers. Why? Communications, technology, are all feeding into fundraising efforts now. And it's all, what was the topic for this episode? Elevating. It all feeds into elevating your nonprofit to better serve your community. Amen? So uh, that's why the tech is, is not just because it tickles my fancy, but because I also know how relevant technology is. Not just, oh, that you know how to go on Google, um, you know how to research some stuff online. You know how to edit your website. But the fact that there's technology that can, for one, automate your efforts. I'm very well aware of what is possible with technology today. Trust me. I've been very well aware of technology and what it was going to do to the jobs since 97 when I first saw a self-checkout in a grocery store. I knew then things were going to be drastically different 
in the not so distant future. I just didn't know when. And here we are, 2023, and we have technology like chat, GPT. Uh, we have, uh, oh, wow. I just learned about, on a podcast I watched, shout out to EYL, Earn Your Leisure, about a shape-changing robot. Um, I, that's not... the. That's not, the, it's not necessarily shape. I forget, I forget the, this was, this was not part of the discussion, but when it was brought up and I don't remember if it was, uh, Shad or Troy or Ian who brought it up, but when it was brought up, I had to Google, I had to go to you, I had to go to YouTube. <laughs> I had to go down and said, he, did he just say a robot that turns into liquid? No, uh, yeah, <laughs> the video I watched was only nine days old and there were other videos older, but I mean, this is, they tested it in a prison cell and this robot liquefied itself, went under the door, came up, uh, came up on the other side of the cell bars and reform, uh, what? If that ain't Terminator 2 stuff, I don't know what is. I told my mom, <laughs> shout out to Angela Scott, and then that's exactly what she, that was in Terminator 2. I say, yeah, I say, yeah, but guess what? <laughs> Here it is. So uh, that is one reason why I love that I do have a, a, um, a desire to just learn of the latest techie stuff, not just to know about it. I want to try it. I love chat GPT. Oh, I love, and, and again, <laughs> and again, thanks to uh shout out to Ian on uh, EYL. That's how I even heard about it a few weeks ago. I was like, D do what? What? Oh yeah. He was, he was on it. He was on point. And that if you ever want to get techie with me, holla at me. I will have a blast. Uh, now, I'm not saying to show you how to use these things. I will link chat GPT in the description. I'll tell you why. Hey, if you have a blog post, I'm just saying, if you have a blog post on your website, this is a way to get it done. How? Because you can put in there 600 word blog post about how to reduce the number of dogs put to sleep some whatever pertaining to what you do and yeah i mean and and 10 seconds later 15 seconds later boom and you'll see it go on it typing <laughs> like is it really doing that yep the high the most i've done so far is a thousand words <laughs> so and but it, it is a robot you put in exactly Look, I'm old school, so all I can say is the Jetsons. If you're new school, I don't know what to tell you. Um, I, I, I don't watch TV like that anymore. But all that to come back to why uh, if you're not techie, I urge you to at least stay abreast of what is available in the tech space for your nonprofit. Why? Erica, what's a no-kill shelter got to do with uh, technology? What, what does technology have to do with a no-kill shelter? animal shelter. Oh, I'll tell you why. Other than you can elevate your efforts in donations and support, um, other than you can automate some of the resources and eliminate the need for volunteers. You don't have to put so much effort into getting volunteers uh, because you can now automate some things. You can now have technology work for you. Uh, technology is not just eliminating jobs which, you know, I hate to say that, but if your kids, grandkids, or you are not in school uh, to do something to program these machines, then prayers up for you. But that's really where everything is uh, having to go. And so, um, but yeah, they're also, these, these, the technology is also replacing volunteers, right? And these days, people are having to work two jobs because their jobs, you see the fight, not wanting to do uh, labor unions and not wanting to pay, not wanting to raise 
minimum wage, but yet the housing it has gone up, skyrocketed, skyrocketed, because these landlords want to get back the money that they lost when they couldn't evict people? Oh, come on. All this comes back around full circle. It all comes back around full circle. And when people are have to worry about their main, their bread and butter, their family, a roof over their head, you know, and now, okay, the dollar, we, we won't even go there, but money doesn't stretch as far as it used to. I know volunteers are not as readily available as they were. So this is the technology is one way of doing that. Okay. It's one way of, of helping out. And so now the cost of this one, not too bad, $400, uh, depending on timing and N10, N-T-E-N, membership. So again, come to the website, thecnnpodcast.com, get the uh, link to get full details. Events, 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 feed you knowledge, wisdom, networking, resources on how to what? Go back to the beginning, elevating your nonprofit organization to better serve your community. Um, whether you are already in the homelessness, whether you're already serving the homeless community, if you're doing a great job at it, it would really be awesome if you could show a newbie how to do a great job at it. Even if you bring them under your wings, team up together, even if it's virtual because maybe they're across the country or around the world from you, each one teach one, bless one. And one thing that I do truly believe is not just that, but learning. We have to stay in learning mode. And in order to stay in learning mode, family, we have to stay humble. We have to stay humble in order to learn. So it's not a race. It's not a race. It's not a race at all. It's, it, it, it's all about networking. It's all about how can we come together to solve these issues that everyone is facing. Amen? So if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Again, visit the website the CNN podcast to get the links and information in the show notes in the uh, description. Also, if you would like to be a guest, come on, the CNN podcast.com, click the be a guest tab, complete your information, and we will contact you to see when's a good time to record. And we will reach out to you. Thank you. Also, if any of this information was helpful, and I hope it is, uh, I ask that you please like, share, and subscribe to our podcast. If you know of other nonprofit organizations who could use this information, don't keep it to yourself. There's plenty to go around. There is plenty to go around. Please share it with them. Share it with your friends. Share it with your family. Share it with your online community. Please help us grow um, so that we can reach around the world in an effort to create the global network that we set out to do in the first place. Amen? And lastly, if you would like to advertise on the CNN podcast and be heard and seen by thousands each month, awesome. Again, come to the website and click the advertise button and someone will reach out to you. Until next time, as always, be awesome and be blessed.